Hello everybody and welcome! I thought I would use the occasion of the Apollo 11 anniversary to talk a bit about space exploration, especially in regards to reaching Mars one day. Maybe? Eventually? Spoiler alert! This may get emotional near the end. But first I would like to show you a new and improved version of my Saturn V slash Apollo 11 replica in Kerbal Space Program. As YouTube user Der Blaue correctly pointed out, the one in the previous video was a bit too fat. The reason for this was me messing up the conversion ratio from real life to game. Actually I did it more off the top of my head, which obviously wasn't optimal. Well, the saying measure twice, build once does have its merits and so I calculated the correct height and width of the rocket again and here we have it, the new and improved version. Let's break this thing down top to bottom. First there is the command and service module. I have used a small fairing to create the protective shield around the capsule. I also used a fairing to create the service compartment, including the batteries and fuel cells. And yes, the launch escape system does work. Moving on to the lander. The descent stage includes science equipment and everything needed to land. The ascent stage is basically just a two-man lander can with fuel tanks attached. I've added some solid rocket motors to have a more faithful recreation of the lunar module compared to my previous video. The real Eagle vehicle was propelled off of the descent stage by tiny solid rocket boosters before the real engine would ignite. Stage 3, or S4B as it was called on the real Saturn, is pretty straightforward. I have used two fairings to recreate the petal style mechanism and pull out the lander module. In previous KSP versions I was able to kind of stack fairings together, that trick unfortunately no longer works. The small nose cones near the bottom hide the sapotrons intended to get the third stage off of the second one. Speaking of which, this one, called simply S2 back in the day, is basically a conic fairing with some tightly wrapped tanks offset halfway inside of it. The spine, so to speak, is made of structural beams to keep it fairly slim. Another fairing caps off the end with the five engines. Now before we get to the main stage, there is the matter of the interstage fairing. And it's basically just some wing parts attached to a radial decoupler. It makes for some cool visuals though. The big first stage was a bit of a hassle. I had to drain fuel from all stages and even add a few aero spikes in the mix since the main sails, even though inspired by the mighty Rocket Dyn F1 engines, did not have enough power on their own to push this beast off the ground. I didn't want to use vectors or the mammoth or resort to mods, so additional engines it was. So yeah, there it is, my improved Saturn V replica. I hope you like it. Now let's get back to the thing I mentioned earlier, space exploration. Will we send humans to Mars in 2020 as suggested a few years ago? There's no way to sugarcoat this. No. I would love to be alive to see an Apollo moment, but I am pessimistic about the current feasibility of such a project. There have been some discouraging news lately regarding NASA's Mars program. Ars Technica cites the director of human spaceflight, Bill Gerstenmeier, that the space agency does not have the necessary funding to send humans to Mars. The main reason is the lack of what Gerstenmeier calls surface systems. So basically there is no viable lander, no return vehicle and no habitats or anything ready to send to Mars. Sure there are a lot of concepts, including a few funky rover designs, but nothing NASA could get ready and rated for human spaceflight anytime soon. And that's really a pity. 
So basically the SLS, if it will ever be finished, will be relegated to being a huge cargo transporter for lower Earth orbit or for getting stuff to the moon. So what about SpaceX? There appears to be a change in plans regarding the initial idea of landing the Dragon 2 spacecraft using the now tried and true powered landing approach. Elon Musk said they are now looking at a different approach to do that. He was probably referring to the interplanetary transport system idea SpaceX presented last year, since he mentioned the new vehicle would be bigger. But how would astronauts survive on Mars? How would they move around? So far there is no mention of that. By the way, this also means the Dragon 2 will not be upgraded to use powered landings for returning astronauts from the ISS. And also SpaceX has been known to, well, not really meet deadlines when it comes to lofty projects. So are we doomed to stick to our neck of the space woods for the next few decades? I honestly don't know. To paraphrase astrophysicist and host of Cosmos, Neil deGrasse Tyson, if your goal is just space exploration, so to simply gather science, send probes. Vehicles without all the bits and pieces required to make them safe for humans are by far easier to build. You basically just need a way to provide electricity and stay in radio contact. If you send a human, you need air, you need water, you need food, you need facilities to cater to the human's needs like toilets, beds, etc. You will need to pack medicine, at least one spacesuit and a lot of other stuff. But, and this is a big but, a robot will never spark the same fascination for space in others like seeing another human set foot on another planet. Me? I would give my right arm to be able to visit another world. Okay, maybe not an arm, because then I would probably not be eligible for spaceflight. An earlobe? Half a nose? Other um, appendages that would be just in the way in zero gravity? Anyways, there is a chance that we could live to see a human Mars landing happen. But that would require some strong commitment to the cause of space exploration. Some we choose to go to the moon kind of spirit. And frankly, I don't see it at the moment. I hope I'm wrong. All I can do now is build weird rockets and monstrous spaceships and make videos about it. And maybe this inspires one of you to get going and come up with some engineering ingenuity for a new spacecraft or a new way to code guidance systems, or to be an astronaut and explore space. I haven't stopped dreaming. Have you? Okay, but before this drifts off too much into melancholy, here's a little preview of what you can expect on this channel very soon. Thanks for watching, goodbye.